Oh, well, hey there. I'm turning off my sound. It's so, so loud. Um, topic 3.2, chromosomes. Uh, talking to you guys a little bit in Friday and day, Monday. Um, looks like that we have very different experiences with uh, what we learned in ninth grade. So I'm uh, going to go over chromosomes, kind of like the basics. I know we talked about uh, pedigree today in class, but giving a little bit more information uh, behind what a chromosome is. Here you go. Here's your topic. How exactly they are, um, when they are visible, how they are visible, the difference between prokaryotic and eukaryotic, and how the chromosome numbers make us very different genetic species. We're going to get into meiosis after um, this one, so talking about haploid versus diploid. Again, some things that you should have some general information from, from ninth grade, but I may go a little bit more into it um, because of your different experiences online, okay? All right, so first of all, don't write this part down. Here, let me escape here. So um, this is a little bit of a review of what DNA is, right? So this right here is everything that we learned in the last uh, um, uh, unit. So don't worry about writing this down right here, but just remember that DNA is double-stranded. It's made of our four different bases and that the order of those bases, I'm sorry, I'm fixing the floor, uh, determine the specific proteins that we made. Uh, today in class, we watched that one wrong letter. So talking about the importance of just, if even if we just have one gone, how that changes the shape of the protein and therefore can cause huge issues um, um, in protein synthesis and thus the enzyme function and human, uh, or not just human, but all uh, species survival, okay? All right, so new information, yay, chromosome. So, when I have a single double-stranded, that's fun, single double-stranded DNA molecule, we call that a chromosome. And a single chromosome can contain thousands of unique genes on either strand. In our last one, we looked at that, like the gene and the loci and how to um, numerically uh, notate where things are on a um, chromosome or chromatid. Uh, and so just know that every single chromosome, remember, contains all those. And then there's some regions that do not code for anything. Chromosome structured between prokaryotic and eukaryotic, definitely something you need to know. We reviewed a little bit back in topic one, but we're gonna go back through that. Um, you do need to know that in prokaryotic, we get circular chromosomes, and in eukaryotic, we get linear, right? So they look more like this. When I get two that are lined up, my homologous chromosomes, you get them like this. But when I get um, a single one like this, right, that's called a chromosome, or TID, and that happens in eukaryotic cells and in prokaryotic cells, we get those circular. So what that looks like, I'm going to give you a little bit more information about what you should put in your margins here. So what that looks like in a cell here, right? So those prokaryotes, because we don't have the nucleus, right? Remember that prokaryotics do not contain the nucleus. They have the region in the middle called the nucleoid. Um, so uh, chromosomes only become visible right before a cell goes to divide. So going all the way back to mitosis, right? So in mitosis, we looked at right before a cell divides, we get those chromosomes that are visible. And you could see the different stages where they line up, come apart, um, and I get two identical cells, right? So we're going to be looking at when the chromosome is visible, both in uh, prokaryotic and eukaryotic. Okay, so prokaryotes, no nucleus. And so the middle area is called a nucleoid, which we talked about not drawing the membrane, those single little dashes, bringing back nightmares. Um, and in prokaryotes, we have one single chromosome, right? So we're going to be talking about chromosome numbers later, but for prokaryotes, one, right? Pro, one. And it is called genophore, right? So the genophore, here's a picture of it here, right? So circular DNA. Um, it is not bound to membranes. I'm sorry, membranes. I'm sorry, to a protein which doesn't make sense now, but in this slide it will. Uh, but in the middle, we get um, a histone, a chromosome that um, the nucleus, I'm sorry, the DNA kind of winds around. So prokaryotes, no protein, it's circular, it's called genophore. And the genome, right, the sequence of it is usually more compact. So we don't get those introns that we called about kind of like that junk DNA that don't code for anything. Right? So if I were to outline the differences in chromosomes between prokaryotes and eukaryotes, here's some good information to have. Right. Some eukaryotic organelles possess the circular DNA. We talked about how chloroplasts and mitochondria, the fact that they have their own DNA is actually an important um, piece of evidence that um, how eukaryotic or prokaryotes turned into eukaryotes right over time. Remember, we talked about how 
different prokaryotes like consumed but did not digest or break down. And so the fact that chloroplasts and mitochondria actually have this circular DNA is a piece of evidence um, for uh, the progression of life on Earth. Okay. All right. Moving on then. Oh, sorry. Back here. Here. All right. So a plasmid. So a plasmid, so prokaryotes may contain extra DNA molecules in addition to the genophore. So why would they carry extra DNA molecules? Think about that. So if I have extra here, um, they're called plasmids and they are capable of autonomous functions, which means like they can automatically um, perform certain things or make certain proteins, um, right? Depend independent of the um, center, I'm sorry, the DNA that's in the middle, the genophore, okay? Um, prokaryotes can actually exchange these plasmids. Why did we talk about this? We talked about bacterial conjunction and now I'm just blanking on when. Oh, it might've been in the evidence of life, like moving um, forward. So anyways, prokaryotes can actually exchange these plasmids by something called bacterial conjunction, which is different than mitosis. Remember it's when the two come together. So they're two different types of bacteria. They come together and they kind of mix up their things and they come apart having the same. Um, I seriously cannot remember what topic that was, but I know we have already gone through this just a little bit. Okay. So eukaryotes um, may contain those circular right? So that's circular um, DNA, but they do not contain plasmids unless they are genetically modified. So we'll talk about that. So sometimes we genetically modify so that they create these certain proteins, um, but that is not naturally occurring. Okay. So here's the difference here. So here's the genophore, right? This is my circular DNA here, bacterial chromosome, and then this is called a plasmid. So completely circular, has the lines this way, uh, and that is, again, an autonomous DNA molecule. Um, and then I'm going to go back and look where we talked about conjunction. All right. All right. Here we go. Moving on. Um, you can actually like these. Let's put these like into our margins, right? Start putting these diagrams into our margins so that we have those. Um, you don't have to draw those later. Okay. Um, now talking about eukaryotic chromosomes. So eukaryotic chromosomes are linear. We already talked about that. Uh, remember that they are copied by my RNA molecules and that, oops, actually it should go like this. looks like that. Um, then that is how they go out to create uh, proteins right at the ribosomes. And those nuclear pores are the ones that allow it to move out. But these chromosomes cannot move out of the nucleus, right? So membrane bound. These uh, chromosomes are linear, as we talked about, when they go to line up for mitosis, right? My homologous chromosomes come together. Uh, this genome is a lot less compact, so it has introns, which don't code for any proteins. And uh, until it goes to uh, replicate, chromosomes actually are um, uncondensed chromatin, right? So it's very long and singular and they're uncondensed and they only condense here right before the cell goes to divide. Right, so they organize themselves as visible chromosomes. And that is how we were able to see the stages of mitosis in, um, in the microscope, right? like the onion root tip. We were able to see the stages that were actually in mitosis versus the interface. All right, so this is a picture of an eukaryotic chromosomes. We'll look at those a little bit more with karyograms. All right, going back to your last notes, we talked about that there are certain uh, notations right here. So 7P, right, looking at the arm, or the, um, uh, the portion, right, the sequence of it, um, P31.2, so we can actually look at where a certain gene is located, right? So eukaryotic organisms have more than one chromosome. Each of them carries very unique genes, and they're located at loci, right? So located at loci. This is from my last lecture. Uh, they have different sizes and the lengths and the banding patterns so that when they actually go to line up, they line up as homologous or the same ones. And then the gene loci, this is all from last lecture, can be identified with a number arm and banding region in this notation, all right? So this is just an example, right? So this is chromosome three, 11, and 15. Now, each certain organism has a very distinct number of chromosomes. Again, we talked about this. So it gives it its very distinct um, features a species is specific to chromosomes. We talked about there's no correlation between the number and the complexity, uh, but it should know that members of different species cannot genetically combine their cells unless they have um, 
really sim so a uh, donkey and a horse actually have 64 and 62 and they can breed to make what's called a mule um, but this mule is infertile so once we create that organism they are not able to have uh, viable embryos organisms right they cannot reproduce right so uh, you cannot mix chromosomes of two, uh, two very different um, organisms or species I want to say but some of them you can, but when you do, they have incompatible gametes, which means they cannot pair back up to make a different type of, um, I'm sorry, more mules, right? So horse, donkeys, mule, but mules cannot breed after, um, after they are created, okay? Haploid versus diploid. Hold on just a second. Sorry, I was trying to see if this is in the meiosis lecture. It is not, so we are gonna write it down here. Um, okay, haploid versus uh, diploid. We're going to end here for today, part one. Um, okay, so in your cells in your body, right, every single cell in your body has a complete set of DNA except for two different cells. So those are your gametes. So in females, those are eggs. In male, those are sperm. And gametes only have half the amount of the DNA or chromosomes. In every other cell in your body, we have a complete set, right? So let's go back and write that down. So in sexually reproducing organisms, um, we get uh, two haploids coming together, right? So I get copy chromosomes from mom, copy of chromosomes from dad, and that complete set is called diploid. We notate that with 2N, right? So I have 23 homologous chromosomes, well actually 22 and then my sex, right? So diploid means a complete set of chromosomes. All of the body cells have paired chromosomes. Um, uh, I'm sorry, while all these, so this is my body cells, oh, that's there. The sex cells are called gametes and they have half, right? Which makes sense. So um, egg, sperm and egg come together to create a 2N, but I get half from mom, half from dad, right? So when I look at chromosomes um, visually, these are diploid, right? Because I have a pair of um, my chromosomes together, similar chromosomes, pair and pair, right? So this is a diploid cell. This is the haploid with only half. Um, organisms that only reproduce asexually are haploid. So what did we talk about? Ace oh, and bacteria, right? So that my bacteria only reproduce asexually and they have half and they create an exact copy of it versus sexually reproducing organisms get half from mom, half from dad. We're gonna go back into that way more in depth when we go in meiosis in topic 3.3. But for today, we're gonna to end that here. All right, we'll start out part two tomorrow. So know that clear back, right? Um, going through, know that um, vocab, I talked a lot about the vocab for this unit. There's just a lot of kind of straightforward definitions you need to know. Um, definitely prokaryotic versus eukaryotic and being able to look at these um, homologous chromosomes pairing up. That is the end of 3.2 part one. I'll see you guys later.